Hello, I'm Mike James. And I'm Jean Anderson. We hope you're having a very happy Christmas. This is not going to be our regular newscast. We will give you our usual summary of the news at 6.30. But on this Christmas day, we decided to set aside the time to give you something very special. Mm. Recent surveys show that 64% of you get most of your news from television. And so on this day, when the pace of the news tends to slacken a beat or two, we thought we'd give you a chance to see how television gets its news. We have done a story about ourselves. We have picked December 1st, 1981. And so now we go behind the cameras for a day in the life of King 5 News. We hope you enjoy it. It may be the middle of the night, but by this time, Liz McHale's day is half done. She's the producer of the 6.30 a.m. newscast. The wires of the Associated Press and United Press International run around the clock. Liz keeps up with them to find out what the rest of the world is doing and decides what should go on the early news. Good morning, this is Kathy at King TV. How, <laughs> how's the Coast Guard today? Calls are made to police, fire, and other Pretty agencies. Much the same old thing, huh? Okay, thanks a lot. Have a real good day. Bye bye. I think it was 3.05. The overnight stories are Too edited late. and re edited. Go back, we're going to need to cut him. And I'd like to have put on that end part, you know, the, the stuff with the guard walking around the snow, but. Security and reduce tensions. That's it. An early forecast is a big part of the morning news. I'll take about a half hour to review all the different charts and then start to put together a forecast. And uh, then they have computerized runs which give us an idea of what's going to happen. Coming in at 4.30 in the morning, I think the first task is probably just to wake up, which is a task in itself. South of Tacoma, fire investigators are checking into the possibility of arson in a fire at Bethel High School last night that caused at least a quarter million dollars in damage. And the state legislature remains in session, bogged down over a plan to cut the budget while increasing the sales tax. Good morning, this is Kathy of King TV. And this is one of the sound cuts that we used on the other um, yeah. Oh, just a quickie windstorm. We get the first news. We are not restricted just to local news or just to state news or just to national news. We can use any news, international, Europe, the East Coast, because we have it first, and we have it for th first for the people on this coast when they wake up in the morning. We, we don't have to worry if they've heard it before. Most of the stuff that's happened happened when they were sleeping. Here we go. This is it. OK, Don, it's Tuesday morning. So be excited. This is King 5 Morning News, reported by Don Madsen and Jeff Renner. Good morning, and welcome to December. It's Tuesday, December 1st, and here are the top news stories. A Yugoslav Airways jet has gone down on the Mediterranean island of Corsica. The airliner carried 168 tourists and a crew of six. In Spanaway, fire officials are investigating whether arson was the cause of a big fire last Penalty. night that destroyed four classrooms at Bethel High School. In Olympia, legislators have failed to reach agreement on a sales tax bill that was slated to go into effect today. Its passage would have brought a million dollars a day to state coffers. We'll have details of those stories coming up shortly, but first, we're going to check in with Jeff and see what's happening with the weather. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Don, and good morning, everybody else. We have a wet and very windy day to wake up to today. Checking in with our satellite picture, we have a little bit of clearing right now, just behind the cold front which moved through, but lots of clouds to the west of us. And our forecast for today, well, continued wet and windy. 
Highs at best in the low 50s, warmer than average, and lows tonight only dropping to the mid 40s. Now back to Don. Now let's see if the wet and windy weather is causing any problems for commuters this morning. Here's Rich Johnson with today's traffic report. Well, after spending yesterday morning and afternoon learning how to commute once again, looks like you're uh, handling it just fine. If you're just leaving the house... Well, most people say something about working this, this early shift. The thing they'll, they'll say is that it must be incredibly horrible to get up that, that hour. I suppose the best thing is going across the western high-rise of the Evergreen Point Bridge and looking in the rearview mirror and not seeing one other car. Three more newscasts and we're done. Some people are On News Center 5, every newscast, every update has a great deal behind it. Because besides the things you see and hear on the screen, there's even more going on off screen. Checking and double checking, writing and rewriting. It's the reason the information we report is so reliable. It's the things you don't see that make the things you do see so good. On News Center 5. When the city is just awakening, our day has already begun. New Center 5. On the job, investigating, probing, researching, and then reporting the most accurate, most carefully written television journalism in the Northwest. And at day's end, and through the night, the job goes on. It's the commitment that's made and kept on New Center 5. The first crew, George Snyder and Ken Jones, is in early today to finish shooting a story on the Union Gospel mission. So government cutbacks affects the mission? Yeah, mission. In terms of their resources, yeah, not in terms well, of the people that serve, or both? Both. The usage of the mission is way up. I guess they're going to fill the void. George that, uh, has been working on the story. Ken Jones, the, the photographer, needs to know the background. So we're shooting, what, a 30-second sequence? More than that. This would be the bulk of the story. Not long after they leave, Mary Rothschild comes into work. She's one of two daytime assignment editors. They decide who will cover what story and keep track of the day. I wish we had news for you, Mary, but I'm afraid we don't. What did you get at the high school file last mm -hmm. <clears throat> But nothing from really overnight overnight. There just really wasn't much going on. Once Terry Tazioli, the other assignment editor, is in, they start to schedule reporters and photographers. Okay. Renee called to say that her basement is flooded and... <laughs> she may be late. <laughs> and Mark is at the and dentist. Mark is at the dentist. And he's going to be late. And George Stark is over there puffing cigars. And he's here. He's here. He was on a research date. Kennedy. Kennedy said yesterday as she left that she didn't know what she was going to do. Um, is she going to have one? <clears throat> Well, she wanted to do an update, but she didn't say it's an update. Why don't we have him do this one? TV News. Because he's done some boating stuff yes. before. Hi, Pete. 
Mary, great DC. Okay, Mary, two stories. One, uh, Senator Gordon yeah. has recommended that Richard Allen be fired. Pete Schulberg calls in from King's Washington, D.C. Bureau. Two reporters and a photographer there cover national news, which affects the Northwest region. So we thought we'd do a piece uh, involving him. The second one is that the Senate is debating uh, defense appropriations today, and Don Roberts is up there on that story. And how will it come? Satellite. All right. Got the satellite feed tonight. Hmm. Okay. Don Manson is still working on the brief update newscasts during the Today Show and Seattle Today. This guy just called. His name is John Winston. He's one of the parents in that school mm -hmm. of the guy who was killed by the train. And they're having an all-day call-in for donations to the oh. school at this realty. There is an outage over there, and it's affecting commercial customers up and down the um, 405 corridor around Greenwood Inn. Okay. He's going to call back in about a half hour. A transformer's okay. out, and he said by then they should know why. Okay. Gentlemen, King 5 News is here. And they're doing a piece on what it's like in the morning at the mission. Uh, if you don't want to be involved, just uh, if, they co if they come around, move out of the way. If you just as soon not be at all involved while they're here, just step out for a moment. They won't be long. Back well, we need two things. Uh, yeah, one is finance, one is volunteer. In a lot of cases, you know, he says they're a lot younger. They're coming from different parts of the country looking for work. Those kinds of things I need to show. This crew will spend two hours at the Union Gospel Mission shooting a story to run less than two minutes on the air. So apparently they're, they're lost down here, right? And then he washed ashore here. Right. So they're looking around in here. Oh. In the newsroom, a story is breaking on the Washington coast. A missing fishing boat captain has turned up alive. Seconds ago, yeah. A call goes to the King Northwest Network station in Portland, closer to the scene. The story just moved on UPI. Did you see it? Which one? Uh, about a captain of a capsized trawler being washed ashore. Oh, really? I didn't see He's that. been out in a life raft for two days. Huh. Whereabouts is it? He's, he washed ashore at Oysterville. He's missing, or he's, his home port is Warrington. We'll try and get somebody else down there. Okay. If you get a sense for it, why don't you call us? Also today, the negligent homicide trial of Dorothy Judge goes to the jury. Hattie Kaufman will cover that. Thanks, Hattie. And I don't know what the weather's like, but I think they can fly that helicopter like that. Well, that's the way I feel about it. We might take a fixed wing, though, Yeah. if the weather's not too bad. In Spanaway, the Tacoma Bureau crew is back at Bethel High School to check with fire officials about the cause of last night's fire. Arson or accident? Okay, where, where is that? Steve Knight checks on the power outage. Okay, you, you is like, are, are like the Greenwood Inn and Denny still without power? We are shooting barefoot in the park in performance tonight. Need one shooter. Uh, Brian, uh, Craig Johnson from upstairs will be the other shooter. Uh, Can we talk to Lucy? Mary? We're on our way if you find out. Radio. They do. He's been out in a life raft for two days. Oh, he's alive? Yeah. I was going to say, another no, drowning? No, no, he's but, alive. But they're missing crewmen. They're, 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 they're missing crewmen. Anyway, uh, okay, he's at the, the hospital the now in Owaco. Uh, Let's go. Do I have to fly? Yeah. <laughs> this is one of these great moral questions that Lou Grant grappled with last night. That's true. Do I have to fly? The photographer didn't have to go from the helicopter. You take when Mark Anderson gets in, the crew heads for Boeing Field. The weather is too bad to fly the helicopter. The sports department is making its plans. There's a lot happening in basketball today, and a racquetball feature is on the schedule. Don't worry about that. You know, power outages. What, what can you see? The lights are on yeah. in the daytime. If Denny's would have been without lights or something like that, wouldn't I? The crew's working. But, but they didn't have any problems? I mean, they served breakfast and everything okay? Lights were on wheel by. 
You know, it's, okay. you can't go in and take pictures of the lights on yeah. until the lights were out. So, what's next? Sometimes the television news business can seem pretty flamboyant. At News Center 5, that's part of it, but just part. Because we know that to be reliable, you have to be thorough in all the less glamorous routine background work that's really most important to information reporting. It doesn't make the news more flashy, just more accurate. News Center 5. Line up according to height, weight, zero number. You probably dominate on all those. The information on what stories are being covered and who's covering them has to go to a number of people. Linda Gist, managing editor, in charge of the news content of the program. Executive producer Phil Sturholm, concerned with the visual presentation. News director Paul Steinley, with overall responsibilities for the news department. And the producers of the 5 and 6.30 p.m. newscast. This is their first chance to find out how the day is shaping up. Okay, the weather shots are on film today. Who can see those? Judge trial. The scramble begins. Um, it's Kaufman. Probably won't be Allen. Has to be, doesn't it? No, no Mary just talked to Hattie. Um, she... Defense is rested. Closing argument starts soon. <laughs> Any minute. Uh, our only chance is going to get to be to get an Angie outside the door and get her leaving. By five, but that, that may be a live shot. It could be. But let, let Hattie know that's a possibility, would you? Gospel mission is, is essentially done. Snyder needs to write that. That'll be for today. It's a pretty good story. He was talking about two minutes or so. Uh, Olympia budget. Um, <laughs> they go back at it again today at, at 10 or 10.30, and it's the House this time, and, and we're going to see whether or not what they do with the Senate's budget proposal. Having Polk on the 6th area is really timely. You know, it's a real opportunity to expand on the big story. Mm -hmm. A 14 is a scratch. I think it was scratched. Right. The lights were on when we got out to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the traffic lights? The power's on. Yeah, yeah they, we were going up and down every street we could find. And they were going on right in front of us. So we have... So it's a scratch. 21. Uh, another brilliant idea about the assignment desk, however. Scratch. <laughs> <laughs> 28. Wait, it's cap size, cap two. Yeah. The Coast Guard says that there were two, there were four people on board the trawler. Yep. Two people in the life raft. They both washed ashore. The captain went looking for a cabin. Somewhere I don't know if I could state a philosophy in a simple uh, sentence or two. I think it, it has to do with providing the community what it needs to know and commenting on things it wants to know about. Uh, when the legislature is in session as it is now, we devote resources to that because uh, the future of the state, or the quality of life here, in some degree, will be determined by that. On the other hand, we do sports. Uh, I'm sure we could all live without knowing what happened to the Seahawks or who was traded by the Chicago Bulls today, but it's fun, and it's a part of life, and it's part of the story of uh, the world we live in, and so we also dedicate resources to that. Don Poyer and Renee Miller set up to shoot the racquetball feature at an athletic club downtown. 
to get enough depressing news during the regular broadcast, whatever it might be, the politics, the seriousness of news, sports, is supposed to be fun. And I think we have to take that main premise when we put our show together. Now, as far as covering it as a journalist, yeah, you do that. But in turn, sports is a little different. You can have fun with it. You can have a twist with it. You can make a, a comment off the wall in sports and get away with it where you can't do that in news. We're here. Well, Maybe. I'm going to put the Bethel Senior High School over your shoulder. In Spanaway, the Tacoma crew is finishing up its story on the Bethel High School fire. What do you want me? What, mm -hmm. Three, two, one. This is the second fire in the Bethel School District this year. Natchez Trail Elementary School was destroyed. All I got is bus. This is the second fire in the Bethel School District this year. Natchez Trail Elementary School was destroyed in a suspicious fire this past spring. About the same time, two other Pierce County schools suffered heavy damage in arson fires. Investigators say there is no apparent cause. I think it's uh, bus time. Things quiet down, the on-camera part is shot, they head to the Tacoma office and begin editing the story. Some of the videotape for the report will come from the previous day's story. The library has already cataloged it so it can be found again. Film and tape are held for years in case they're needed. The library is helping Linda Kennedy work on an update for Action Northwest, a progress report on past consumer stories. Action Northwest is staffed mostly by volunteers who research the dozens of calls and consumer complaints that come in each day. He said he was enrolled uh, in 1972. He was refused for 10 years, and in April he was finally accepted. He wants, um, they advise him that he would... Some are referred to state and federal agencies. Others are investigated and used as the basis for on-air reports. I think, I think you have to redo that part just because... There's a production problem in the Union Gospel Mission story over how to handle one of the interviews. If we're going, if he's important, then we should see him. And if we can't see him at that point, then I think we should uh, handle it a different way. I think, I think viewer tr viewers trust, trust that voice. You know, if you're going to try to trust a voice for two minutes, then that's a problem. But I think they'll trust it for, two, for 20 seconds and then... I think the first question they're going to gonna say is, who is that? And once... You know, I really believe once a, once a viewer says, who is that or where is that or where am yeah, I, see, I don't then think you've that'll lost happen. Let me go see the sound cut. Sure. You get it? Let me go see it and then we can look at it. His hearing yesterday to witness. And yeah. Then, you know, the average age on seal skid road has dropped from uh, 50 to 30 in 10 years. Uh, and he cuts the kid's face and he says, geez, I'm out of a job. The situation that we see is one that there's... And all through that, we see it's the... I think you can say it better. Let me see your pictures when you're going to use them. I think Linda Brill and Bob Simmons work on Linda's script for a series of reports on the Washington public power supply system. Then I was going to do a backgrounder and show how did Whoops become a household name. Mm -hmm. George Snyder goes back to the typewriter. Pete Schulberg calls in from Washington, D.C. again. Say, listen, I think it probably came over the wires back there that uh, the Justice Department announced that no criminal violation had occurred by Allen for receiving the thousand. The other story from Washington, D.C. on the defense budget is almost ready for the satellite feed. Opponents of the B-1 are not likely to have better luck. The cent I think that's all that that's, uh, in there, yeah. On the West Coast, the crew has gotten into the hospital to talk with the captain of the sunken trawler. I didn't have the strength to try to paddle, and uh, I was sinking, so I tried floating. At the King County Courthouse, Bob Allen waits with other photographers to get a shot of Dorothy Judge. He'll only have a few seconds as she walks out of the courtroom. George Snyder, his script rewritten, records the narration track for the Union Gospel Mission story. In the main mission, 130,000 meals are served a year, and 200 people are sheltered every night. Up on Pike Street... He and Reiko Higashi begin editing that story. 
There's another meeting, this one to inform film and tape editors, the night assignment desk, and the producers about the status of stories for the 5 and 6.30 newscasts. When I started in 1962, there were six of us that ran the show. Of course, the news show was only 15 minutes in. But uh, now there are 70 of us. And working with 70 people is, is a lot different, and there's more strain because everybody's going every which direction. But fortunately, everybody knows what their job is. They know what has to be done. They know what the deadlines are. So everything that we work for all comes, uh, at the end of the day, all comes to a, a, a finality, and it has to be there. When the city is just awakening, our day has already begun. New Center 5, on the job, investigating, probing, researching, and then reporting the most accurate, most carefully written television journalism in the Northwest. And at day's end, and through the night, the job goes on. It's the commitment that's made and kept on New Center 5. Sometimes the television news business can seem pretty flamboyant. At News Center 5, that's part of it, but just part. Because we know that to be reliable, you have to be thorough in all the less glamorous routine background work that's really most important to information reporting. It doesn't make the news more flashy, just more accurate. News Center 5. Back now? Yeah, they're 40 minutes away. What? He wants 2.30. Oh, boy. Okay, I'll talk to him about it when he gets back. He can write He, I think that's too long. But, but if, if this man has a great story to yeah. tell, I think we should just let him tell it. No, that's, if, the, if it's his story rather than the lawn's, that, that makes a difference. He says it is. The crew covering the fishing boat captain on the Washington coast is just landing in Seattle. That story has become the lead for the 5 o'clock news. Did he say what he wanted for the 6.30? No, but obviously a shorter version. I still think you, you want longer than a stand. I'll five. give him, uh, I can give him two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Hi, Jean. Hello. You may have to do the cutting because, uh, you know, he's not on the look yet. Okay, there. You could um, give him the title of skipper of whatever yeah. boat. Do you know the name of the boat? I got it. Soup's for you. Thanks. Just starts over here. This, this is a Spanglish written out right there. Planner Square standard at the top. Very cool. That's a chance to run your show. Yeah. Wait. Hi, Charlotte. Charlotte Rayner calls in from Olympia to talk about how to handle the story on the legislature in the 5 o'clock news. So what happens now? What do you got today? What do we have tonight? Yeah. How soon might that happen? We just found out what the all Pac-10 football team is. So we're going to tell the world. What is it? Well, I can't tell you in are. one word. Here they are. Uh -huh. That'll probably be about uh, taking you about, oh, nine after. Okay. Okay, I'm a little tight on time tonight, so real good. Bye-bye. Okay, sir. Quick change here. All right.
Economics reporter Bill Cushing is finishing up a report on a drop in interest rates. He and the photographer working with him on the story, Jerry Hickey, decide a graph is needed to make a point clear. Quickie graph for you. Quickie graph? Yeah. They would like to make an ad out of it. More or less what it is is a graph showing two in interest rates dates. be July 8th at 20 and a half percent. Because we could animate in this line in a matte effect, wipe the line over your video and... Uh, make it very simple because we're going to apparently uh, superimpose this over uh, some image off of film. Hi, John. How are you? Fine. How's it going? John Mickish, the director, will deal with the technical end of putting the newscast on the air. Capsize, capsize. Mm -hmm. Terry, I need to talk to you about power outage. Power outage. And we need to get a little more information from Future Power and we'll give it to you. Okay. How's that? What do we know so far? Um, the there was a, some kind of a fire or an explosion at a substation in Bellevue this morning. And, mm -hmm. uh... That's, I, you know, in the variety of things that you do, that, those are the ones that interest me. The lower prime rate means businesses will have it a little easier, but home buyers and consumers can only cheer the downward trend. I'm starting from the top. Work has already begun on the 11 o'clock news. Okay. Their first concern, how to keep an eye on the jury in the judge trial. Does Haley want to cover this for us? I well, think that that's, that's what probably I want to the best about. idea to oh, have yeah. Yeah, yeah, follow through on it. There's an uh, older woman who lives out in Snohomish. And she used to dance. My kind, huh? Just your kind. She used to dance with uh, the assignment desk is planning for tomorrow. On USO tours and all kinds of things. She's a tap dancer. Do they have lessons out there? Yeah, she's well, out very, there during just the day. Tapping along. Yeah. So um, I'll find out who she is. The weather forecast is turned into the 6:30 producer. Hey, we got it in. Thank you. And December plays rough. Okay. Good. Thank you, David. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Got change yeah. for sure. racquetball. The uh, Ada, C.K. Ada, remember yeah. we used that goofy drawing of a guy? It's not on the run sheet, but I want to use it. No, I'll tell Larry. The racquetball film is out of the processor and ready to be cut. Other stories shot earlier on the video cassettes referred to as ENG are already being edited. The report on the Bethel High School fire will be sent up from Tacoma by microwave. The script is fed up from Tacoma on a telephone quip machine. Got it? Hi, this is Andy Beers in Washington, D.C. Uh, you're going to be looking at our satellite here shortly? The Senate is considering spending more How's than $208 billion for defense in 1982. The reports are first picked up by King's Portland station, then transmitted to the rest of the Northwest Network. But I'm giving you, this is Bethel Fire, KGW, right now. Other regional stories are exchanged among the Northwest stations. Uh, yeah, this is Tacoma coming at you now. Mark Anderson and Jim Lalonde finally get in from the coast. All the other stations want the story on the fishing boat captain from Milwaukee, and their unedited uh, tape has to go on the line right away. I'm in a real big hurry. Oh, what's this? Is this for what? Milwaukee. Jim, are you ready? We got, we got, we got the lead story here. So yeah, let's get it. Come on. Somebody tracks me. <clears throat> Mike Carter's already down there. We just don't have a camera person. There's a late verdict in the Dorothy Judge trial. Thank you. A crew is sent to set up a live report from the King County Courthouse. And in Olympia, that crew is getting ready for a live report from the state capitol. This gives you off air, huh? That gives you off air. It just amazes me that anything we do gets on the air. I've often wondered whether we have a system or not. We claim we have this unique system and everything, you can follow the flow of your story through the shop. And I'll be darned if I can see it, because we take things here, we take little bits and pieces over here, we call up Portland, we need a bit from there. Uh, we may even have to call a satellite up out of Washington, D.C. to add another bit. And how all of this stuff comes together is a real tribute to the people who work at it, because it's impossible to keep track of it all, and yet somehow they do it. There's somebody coming right there on Olympia. 
With less than half an hour before airtime, the director, studio cameramen, and other production crew members meet. In a technical language all their own, they go through the show on paper. Let us see a 12-1-12-1 and a DVE-9 over camera 2 at a 1042. We'll go to some ENG that we're not sure of at this time. Page 3 can be a 19-1 gene. Page 4, we'll go to some ENG with a 19-5 at the top King Kong Courthouse. I have live. That may turn out to be true. Let's say Which that we means... don't know as much about page pre-2 as we would like to at this time. And page uh, 5 is going to be a DVE-9 over camera 3 at a 1045. We'll go to some videotape, but we're not sure of it this time. We don't know much about page 8, 9, or 10 at this time. Okay. So we'll go to some film on page 15, which we are not sure of at this time. We may not have it. They gave it to me. All right. Well, it's if it's there, it's there. The story may fall through. There may be a technical problem. We'll Stories that we're getting from our other stations in the King Northwest Network may not come through for whatever reason. We really only think we know what we've got. There's no way to know until 5 o'clock whether, in fact, we have everything that we think we have. Fire on News Center 5, every newscast, every update has a great deal behind it. Because besides the things you see and hear on the screen, there's even more going on off screen. Checking and double checking, writing and rewriting. It's the reason the information we report is so reliable. It's the things you don't see that make the things you do see so good. On News Center 5. When the city is just awakening, our day has already begun. New Center 5. On the job, investigating, probing, researching, and then reporting the most accurate, most carefully written television journalism in the Northwest. And at day's end, and through the night, the job goes on. It's the commitment that's made and kept on New Center 5. Gene again. It had been that earlier and it uh, went away. We're about a yeah, minute okay. uh, 45 away. Page four is first. Judge trial? What's your next one? I don't know. Because this one was supposed to be second. Here's one. I need Michael on the set. He's down in the uh, dressing room. Oh, good. Okay, we'll make it a 9 1. Okay, obviously Michael's not there. Jeannie, let me there. Is there was some information there. What's the decision? 15 uh, seconds. Well, is he, can he, tell him to get himself over there. <laughs> well, well, we're, we're, well, we can decide. There's no, no there'll be some EMG. Let me talk to him. Plenty of time. Yeah. Shock the reason. Stand by the opening <laughs> card. Stand yeah. by master to flip to A. No, Take if you can and flip. We're all the 12s in the line. Come on, on, Michael. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I want him on the phone. Need Mike on the phone real bad. Okay, there we'll is no live report. You will add your way around that. You can get 10 years on each count. No sentencing date has been set. No sentencing date has been set. Thank you. Are you ready? Okay, ready right. one. Yes, we will. Goodbye. Take one spin. Okay, next. Ready effects. Frozen over three. Stand by ENG. 
Thank you. Good evening. This is a dramatic story from uh, oh, Seattle tonight. Please. A King County Superior Court jury has found Dorothy Paul judge guilty of three counts of negligent oh, homicide. Give you that verdict came in the last 30 yeah, minutes. Looks like you might the 19-year-old defendant was charged in the deaths of three children who were struck by a car driven by a judge on a road. Page five is next. next. Page five is next. Okay, let's that change. Okay, where's the uh, cat's cat? Page five is next. Page five is next. Other news today, fire damage to Bethel High School in Spanaway was estimated today at a quarter of a million dollars. The fire broke out on the south end of that school yesterday evening. The damage was limited to around 12 classrooms. Some of them are damaged severely. Investigators sifting through that fire scene today, but no cause of that fire has yet been determined. More on the Bethel fire story now from James Hattori. Crews from Spanaway and several surrounding districts responded to the alarm a little before 6 p.m. In all, some 50 firefighters. We will do page uh, two next, if it's available. Yeah, is page two done yet? How far are we are in Capsized captain, which I don't have. It's supposed to be on the top, but it hasn't come up yet, though. And, you know, that's uh, concerning. It doesn't much matter, though, when you've got a strong lead like that. Here's County Fire Marshal's office. Other people haven't had lost the fire. It's... Is that the right one here, Mark? Yeah, that's the capsized captain. Right. Ten seconds remaining. Stand by. Uh, ready one. Uh, ready two. Ready two. A remarkable fishing story today. A 38-year-old Long Beach fisherman, George McMurrick, is in free condition after surviving a capsizing and 40 That's hours at sea in a life raft. Last week. What the is heck? still searching for four other people. Didn't Jim Lalonde reports. The 86-foot trawler Midnight Express was working the water south of the Columbia River's mouth when rough weather... Up until this point, the newscast has had its problems behind the scenes, but the confusion caused by the late stories has not been obvious to anyone watching at home. Yes. Now, there's been a mistake. Yeah, I need... Who was that person? This picture, shown during the lead-in to Jim Lalonde's story, is a picture of a fisherman missing the previous week, rather than the man who washed ashore near Oysterville. President of the Puget Sound Gilmetters, right? No. It's a mistake that has to be corrected before the news is off the air. Okay. Okay. McMurrick lost another boat identical to the Midnight Express last January. No one was hurt in that accident. Now McMurrick says his fishing days are over. In Alwaco, Jim Lalonde, King 5 News. One of the major questions in Olympia was settled today. A $300 million cut is coming in the state budget. Our legislative correspondent, Charlotte Rayner, will have a live report. Keep the merry and Christmas be chasing. We're here for uh, two minutes, and we have a lot to talk about here. One percent savings are in the bag. So, Charlotte, can you hear all right? Hello, Charlotte, can you hear all right? Say no, uh, wave no into the thing. Go oh, no. They're asking if you can hear. I can hear. <laughs> But not yet. We still have one minute remaining. Page 12 is here. It's a page 12. We... No talk. Just throw it back to Mike and Gene. Five seconds remaining. Ready effects 19-2. Legislators are now moving toward the conclusion of the special session in Olympia called to solve the state's billion-dollar deficit. The House has agreed to the Senate's level of budget cuts, almost $300 million out of state programs. Charlotte Rayner is in Olympia now with a live report. Charlotte. Some people were surprised that the House would go along with the Senate budget cuts of $300 million. But something happened between well, them and now. Take it. Okay, we're here for a minute five. Okay. William Dolman, Anna Cordes Fisherman, considered an act of union activist in the State Gillnetters Association. He was one of the first persons to go to jail uh, for violating the Bolt decision right after the Bolt decision. D-O-L-M-A-N, William. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Now that the House and the Senate have agreed on the level of cuts, half the work of this special session is done. That's because the governor is expected to agree with this level of cuts, about $300 million. The other half of the work is raising taxes. Both bills, the local option sales tax and the state sales tax, are in the Senate, may be voted on tonight. Mike and Jean. Thank you, Charlotte. 
Puget Power Crews hope to have a broken transformer in Bellevue fixed by midnight tonight. The breakdown has left the Greenwood Inn and the Lincoln Business Center in the dark most of the day. The power outage affected most Go. of the area near Highway 405. We're going to redo a story for the 6.30, which uh, are some of the speeches that happened after we went on the air. That'll be for 6.30. We'll be live, have some new, uh, some new sound pops, and then for the 11 o'clock, hopefully they have a couple of things. Stacy? Yeah. It's Relax. getting worse. Relax. Don't let it get to you. Okay. First thing off is... Uh, Work on the 630 newscast is about done. Pretty much the producer, will Steve Smith, will update stories from the 5 o'clock and look for anything new. Because of the way the stories lay out today, I can't change it a lot. I don't have the option, really, of turning it around unless something else happens to, uh, to change what I've got to deal with. Uh, if something happens in Olympia, I can take the Olympia story and move it up. Right now, my lead story and the lead story in the 5 o'clock show are just the same. Some of the stories for the 6.30 newscast are being re-edited now and some stories for the 5 o'clock news are just being finished. It's going to take me about five mother, seconds to do it. Her mother, sisters, and Doris's two younger sons who live at home. <clears> they all came to meet the man who was the first player in the other. Bulls are playing against Sox, Big Ten awards. Bulls are playing against the other. 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 The Chicago Bulls bring their 6-10 record into the Kingdome tonight to meet the Sonics, who have won four of their last five. The Bulls arrived yesterday for a couple of workouts, and this morning, Coach Jerry Sloan ran the Bulls through a fairly intense practice. As he put it, when you're 6-10, you got to change things. One man hoping to get more playing time was rookie guard Ray Bloom of Oregon State, former teammate of Sonic or Mark Radford. He looks forward to playing against Mark, but is more concerned about the practices going on with the Bulls and Coach Sloan right now. It's Tuesday, and again, time to fix up your racquetball game, and some of us need it very badly. Today, pro Mike Hoonan will give you a mean look at a mean backhand. The backhand certainly doesn't have to be a weak link in your game. Providing you develop the confident approach and apply several fundamentals that lead to a full-body stroke. Now, you can develop a consistent <laughs> swing using a smooth, fluid motion from approach to follow-through by having a clear picture or visual image of using your wrist and rotating hitting shoulder and hips to the ball. And your, ba some... your backhand's getting better. My backhand is just as bad as it is <laughs> was three weeks ago. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. When we come back, we'll tell you about some changes at the Union Gospel Mission. Page 33 is the camera three. 34 is out, you both know. 33 is the three. 35 is the camera two. Sometimes the television news business can seem pretty flamboyant. At News Center 5, that's part of it, but just part. Because we know that to be reliable, you have to be thorough in all the less glamorous routine background work that's really most important to information reporting. It doesn't make the news more flashy, just more accurate. News Center 5. On News Center 5, every newscast, every update has a great deal behind it. Because besides the things you see and hear on the screen, there's even more going on off screen. Checking and double checking, writing and rewriting. It's the reason the information you report is so reliable. It's the things you don't see that make the things you do see so good. On News Center 5. When the city is just awakening, our day has already begun. New Center 5. On the job, investigating, probing, researching, and then reporting the most accurate, most carefully written television journalism in the Northwest. And at day's end, and through the night, the job goes on. It's the commitment that's made and kept on New Center 5. This is a time of year when our attention is drawn to many of the people who are helping other people. In Seattle's downtown, the Union Gospel Mission is responding. Here's George Snyder. 
This used to be called the breadline, and in some cases it still is. But while the name may remain the same, the faces are changing. They are younger. It is said that for every 57-year-old alcoholic on Skid Road, there is a 17-year-old kid and a whole lot of other people in between. When I'm not able to get a job, it's pretty bad because I am truly in need. Looks are very deceiving in this case. I was really hungry and I, my stomach has shrunk so much, I can't eat it all. We give a man two beds a month free, no questions asked, and then we expect in those two days that he begin to do something to get his act together because we are trying to teach a basic concept of responsibility. Regular residents of the Union Gospel Mission must look for work, work for the mission itself, or join one of the personal rehabilitation programs. The Union Gospel Mission raises $800,000 a year, mostly from individual donations. It's the largest effort of its kind in the city, and it's just not enough. In Seattle, I'm George Snyder, King 5 News. Here are some of the major stories reported tonight on King 5 News. A 38-year-old fisherman has survived a 40-hour ordeal in a small rubber raft. George McMurrick is the only one of four men on board an 86-foot trawler that sank off the Oregon coast Sunday to make it back to shore. Now, during an earlier report uh, we did tonight about the survival of a fisherman, George McMurrick, we showed a picture of the Anacortes fisherman who is still missing, William Dolman. He is still missing off the coast of California. We showed his picture and identified the picture as McMurrick. But McMurrick did survive that 40-hour ordeal, and William Dolman, the Anacortes fisherman, is still missing. After the correction is made, Bob Simmons does a commentary on a proposed boat tax. Then David Grant does the weather near the end of the 5 o'clock news. Nearly all the charts and satellite photos seen during that segment are added electronically. David stands in the studio in front of a blue background. The special effect called chroma key makes it look like this. Once the 5 o'clock news is done, the show is critiqued the hour examined for what went wrong and what went right. Item two became item three, the capsized captain. But I think we were the only ones that had it here. No, Como got it from K2. Como oh, did they? It. Como ran it in their show at about uh, 20 to 6. Oh, And great. I think they picked it up from K2. That was We are the gamblers. Well, white 11, stand by the the ocean. By now, the 6.30 news is on. The lead story, the special session in Olympia, and an expanded report on the guilty verdict in the trial of Dorothy Judge. Don McGaffin likens parking meters to muggers. Consider, if you will, the parking meter. Hateful things. The only difference between a parking meter and a mugger is the mugger won't take your wristwatch after it takes your money. And don't think for one second it doesn't take That's three newscasts done, only one more to go. Well, Michael, you did it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rats. Bunker. Simmons and I have the best jobs in television in Western America, clearly. Bob pretty much, despite a wonderful sense of humor, he's a very wry sense of humor, pretty much is restricted to the serious side of life, of the journalistic life, serious issues. Uh, as a columnist, I am, I am not restrained in any way. I can do anything. I have, in fact, gone on the air and done a book review of the new kids' coloring books for Christmas, um, went in and read from a children's book once. I've done everything but tap dance and sing, and Simmons suggests I should do that since I could do it better than report. I do the same thing Don does. Uh, what does he do for a living? Would you keep your keep your voice down? If they find out we're both doing the same thing, they're going to fire one of us. Well, listen, is it? Uh, if you're paid for doing opinion pieces, how can you? How can it be other than your own? That's what I've never been able to figure out. <laughs> if, if people are doing opinion pieces and are and are responsible to an editorial board or are responsible to being edited, then whose opinion are they doing? You know? What we as anchors try to do is convey the material that everyone's worked on all day as clearly and concisely and uh, humanly as possible. Because what we really are is storytellers. We're really trying to convey information and trying to make it meaningful to the people who are watching. And often we do that in a pinch. I mean, often we don't have the tapes or, or we have some technical foul up or a story is late in arriving and 
It's really up to us sitting on the set, bringing some perspective to the story to explain it right there uh, to the best we know at the time and, and pick it up and carry it on later in that show, later in the week, later in the month. I try to get through a lot of newspapers. I try to talk to a lot of people. I try to have a feeling for the kinds of stories that we'll be doing, as well as the uh, one or two that I might work on during a week myself. So that if uh, film breaks or a tape breaks or we're going to do a live interview with somebody or we talk to one of our reporters in the field, I'll have at least some knowledge about uh, the story because I've been trying to keep in touch with it uh, along the way. We are the sort of... Uh, Designated no Most major markets have one or more people who review movies and touring plays. What is unique is this city where there are um, now five equity, that is union professional theaters, and another ten theaters that do professional productions even though they are not full time. So that most of my colleagues in other cities who I occasionally see, they strictly do movies and, and Barefoot in the Park coming to town would, with a big time TV star playing the lead would be big stuff for them. Here it's one of seven openings and not the most important by far that are just this week in the theater. Greg Palmer uh, will so review John's Barefoot in the Park for the so 11 o'clock news. Good evening, I'm Aaron Brown. Here are a few of the stories we'll be reporting tonight on King 5 News at 11. That newscast covers the evening stories and wraps up the day's national and local news. And at the Dome, it's the Sonics and the Bulls. We'll have highlights at 11. David? We know for a fact it's snowing in the past. This, and we suspect there's plenty of moisture on its way, too. We'll have details on King 5 News at 11. This program, I think, more than any other, is an editing, uh, editing problem. Trying to figure out what you can give folks in uh, 13 minutes of news, something like that. Plus sports, plus weather. I like a, a show that has all of the elements that our show has, late-breaking and local and national and international. I like to work with, a, with the big picture. The 11 o'clock news takes the same kind of work as the others. Greg Palmer's review is edited. The network stories are re-edited on videotape. There's another live report from Olympia on the special session of the legislature. And it takes the same kind of work in the control room to put all the pieces together. And the last newscast of the day is finished. That's our report for tonight. The morning news at 6.30 a.m. Then 5, 6.30. We're back at 11. Until then, good night from all of us at King 5 News. Good night, Queen.